During the 16th and 17th centuries, Europeans set up sugar plantations in the regions of Brazil and the Caribbean islands. The harvesting and processing of sugar cane required intensive labor which no one would willingly perform. This stimulated the rise of the slave system. Between 10 and 12 million enslaved Africans crossed the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas. The Portuguese were the first to ship enslaved Africans from Angola to Brazil. The English, French and Dutch followed. No more than a few hundred thousand Africans were taken to the Americas before. The demand for slave labor rose sharply with the growth of sugar plantations in the Caribbean and in North America. By the late 17th century, the triangle trade had developed. European ships that were loaded with ammunition, textiles, tobacco and manufactured goods sailed to African slave ports where they traded these goods for captives and sold them to the New World. Slaves were captured during war with neighboring African tribes and some were forcibly removed from their homes to be sold to European slave traders. After the, after the African captives had been sold, they went through the Middle Passage which were notorious for its brutality and the overcrowded, insanitary conditions on slave ships, in which hundreds of Africans were packed tightly into tears. They were chained together with low ceilings not permitting them to sit upright and each slave only having four square feet of space. The heat was intolerable and the oxygen levels became so low that candles would not burn. Africans could go outside on the upper decks for only a few hours each day. Many Africans did not see white people before and thought them to be cannibals, consistently taking Africans away and never returning them. Afraid of being eaten or to avoid suffering, they would commit suicide, jump overboard or starve themselves to death. Believing in death, their souls would return home. Between 15 and 25% of the African slaves bound for the Americas died aboard ships. The autobiography of the West African Iquano is well known for its graphic description of the transatlantic voyage. Those who survived were absolutely dehumanized and treated simply as cargo. Once sold in the market, slave owners would often brand them. The slaves, the lives of slaves were dominated with work, terror and more work. Slaves did all types of work, but in the Caribbean and Brazil majority worked on plantations. Harvested, planted and processed sugar working 10 months out of the year, dusk till dawn. Fertilizing sugarcane required slaves to carry baskets of 80 pounds of manure on their heads up and down rough terrain. Harvesting the cane, speed was important. Once cut, the sugar sap would go sour within a day. Slaves would often work 48 hours straight during harvest with no rest in humid sugar press houses. Some slaves caught their hands in rollers and the overseers kept a hatchet on hand for amputations. Given the living conditions in Brazil, slaves in late 18th century would live until the age of 23. In the USA, living and working conditions were relatively better, meaning more slaves were being born than dying. This meant slave owners would keep slaves healthy enough to reproduce, then steal and sell the children or use them. This explains why the percentage of African slaves imported from Africa to the USA is small in comparison with Caribbean and Brazil, their descendants making up a significant portion of the US population. The legacy, oppression and racism that came with the transatlantic slave trade still exists to this day.